Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's your boy, Brandy Boy, back at it again with another Fallout 4 video. And for this video, I'll be covering the best Fallout 4 mods from the month of October 2021. I'm going to be making this into a series, actually, where I'll cover my favorite mods from each month. But anyway, let's go ahead and get into it. So first, I should address the mod that's been making waves throughout the modding community. I'm talking about Project Mojave, of course. This ambitious mod aims to add the entire New Vegas world space into Fallout 4, along with its NPCs and natural inhabitants. But, uh, let me be clear. This is not going to be a remake of Fallout New Vegas. Rather, it's set during the events of Fallout 4, which is six years after the events of Fallout New Vegas. And in this timeline, it looks like the NCR won the second battle of Hoover Dam, which is the most likely ending, if we're being honest. The mod is still early into its development, but right now, we can consider this a mini DLC of sorts. Currently, only a corner of the map is available, from the Highway Patrol Station, to the Mojave Outpost, and up to Nipton. But, you can also access the Vegas Strip after completing a short quest. To start the quest, you'll have to travel to an unmarked location just south of Listening Post Bravo. From there, you'll find instructions to build a teleporter to the Mojave Wasteland. And then you're supposed to track down a radio signal, which is located in Nipton. After that, you'll obtain an upgrade to the teleporter, which will then allow you to teleport to the Strip. The initial note mentioned that there are several other teleporters in the Mojave, so... As more portions of the map are completed, then that means we'll have more areas that we can teleport to. That's the only quest right now, and... The NPCs don't have any special dialogue, but you can purchase New Vegas weapons from the Gunrunners robot at the Mojave Outpost. Meanwhile, New Vegas clothing will be available from the shopkeeper at the Vault 21 gift shop. In addition to that, you can fully explore the interiors of the casinos, except the Lucky 38. And you can gamble as you please. Just make sure not to lose all of your money. What's also pretty neat is that you can claim suites within the casinos as settlements, so you can fully decorate these luxurious interiors to your heart's content. Or if you're feeling more rugged, then you can claim settlements out in the desert as your own. So even in the Mojave Wasteland, there are still settlements that need your help. Here, I'll mark it on your map. Well, that's basically everything added in by this mod so far. Hopefully it'll make great progress in the near future, because I'm really excited to see where this mod goes. And I'm sure lots of other Fallout fans are too. Ideally, I'd love to see this mod become a fully-fledged fan-made New Vegas sequel with a whole new main questline and dialogue and unique NPCs, but that's asking a lot from a small team of modders. Like I said, this is an early access build, so there's not too much to do right now besides explore the map and reminisce on old times, but make sure to keep an eye out for future updates. Nonetheless, this is one of the biggest modding releases for Fallout of this year, and I'm going to keep it in my load order so I can have fun building settlements out in the Mojave Wasteland. Up next is one that people have been asking about for months, and now it's finally been released publicly to the Nexus just this last October. I'm talking about the Tactical Tablet mod. This mod completely replaces your Pip-Boy with an iPad-style tablet, and it is indeed very tactical looking. It does sport more of a modern, futuristic look, rather than a retro one, but I personally love the look of this tablet. In addition to looking slick, it'll also free up your left arm so you can show off your full outfit. And there's no longer a holotape animation, so it'll speed up that process too. I would say this mod isn't quite lore-friendly, but it sure is logic-friendly, because a tablet would be more convenient to use. The Pip-Boy is cool, sure, but it does get in the way, and... I wouldn't want to be lugging around that big hunk of junk on my arm constantly. So if you're looking for a Pip-Boy replacement, then you might want to take a look at the Tactical Tablet mod. And for the next mod, this one is the Russian Stimpak Replacer. It remodels and reanimates the vanilla Stimpak. And might I say, the animation quality is absolutely top tier. Just look at the way he flips open the medkit and pops off the top of the syringe. Mmm, beautiful. If you've ever played any of the Metro games, then you've probably recognized that's where the mod got its inspiration from. So it's a rather small change in the grand scheme of things, but the vibes on this one are immaculate. If you're tired of the boring vanilla stem pack animation, then you definitely have to try this one out. And now for something completely different. While you're out exploring the wasteland, 
You should take care not to absorb too much radiation, or else you just may mutate into an abomination. Thanks to the Fallout 76 mutations mod, that is. This mod adds in 30 mutations, some of which are present in Fallout 76. These mutations provide useful buffs and bonuses, so they can enhance your effectiveness in combat. But at the same time, you'll also suffer from side effects. To get a mutation, you'll have to subject yourself to high amounts of radiation, and provided you survive, you have a strong chance of acquiring some altered genes. In some cases, these mutations may be desirable to have, so you may spend a while trying to get the right ones. Taking right away or hopping into a decontamination chamber will remove your mutations, so you do have a way to get rid of them. If you want a certain mutation, then you can always try to get the specific serum for it. But to do that, you'll have to find some special Enclave research notes. Supposedly, you should be able to find these as loot, but they are exceedingly rare. Alternatively, you can buy them from doctors, but they are extremely expensive, and you'll have to sell your kidneys. Whichever way you obtain the notes, you'll then be able to craft a serum using Ultracite and Flux, which can be found out in the Glowing Sea. Once you've acquired all the needed materials, take your ingredients and use the newly added mutagen station to craft the serum of your choosing. Even if you already have a mutation, these serums are still very useful because they will negate your side effects. So basically, the best strat is to radiate yourself beyond recognition, then pump yourself full of serums for maximum combat effectiveness. <laughs> Well, uh, that should have gone better, but you get what I mean. These mutations provide some much needed spice to your gameplay, and I would recommend everyone to try out this mod. It's nothing but a bunch of fun. Moving on to weapons now. The first one up is the M1918 Browning Automatic Rifle. This classic American firearm was produced in 1918 and saw use mostly at the end of World War I and during World War II but it also made an appearance in the Fallout New Vegas Dead Money DLC, so it is for sure lore-friendly. By default, the mod utilizes 308 ammunition, but I've converted it to use the proper 30-06 Springfield, which is from the Caliber Complex mod. If you're interested in that one, then you should check out my video on it. But anyway, back to the BAR here. It sports some awesome custom animations and sounds, and it's also compatible with the Tactical Reload Framework. When it comes to customization, there's a lot to do. You can cut down the barrel, upgrade the stock, extend the magazine, add on a modern scope or red dot sight even, but there is an option for a classic NIDAR sight, which is more appropriate for this weapon, or you can just say to heck with it and add on some modern muzzle brakes or suppressors. There's also an option to change the fire rate of the weapon, so you can choose between fast and rowdy, or slow and steady. Lastly, you can add on some functional ammo counters, but that's actually from another mod made by the same author, called the Ammo Counting Framework. What it does is add in new modifications which count how many rounds you have in your firearm. I don't know how it works, but it just works, and it's a pretty neat feature. If you like turning off your HUD, but still want a way to track your ammunition, then this mod is an excellent and immersive way to do so. Currently, it only has a few supported gun mods, but perhaps we'll see more patches in the future. Oh, and before I move on, I should mention that you can find the BAR naturally through the leveled list, or you can head on over to Fort Hagen and pick it off a skeleton. While you're here, you should also pick up the VZ-52, another mod made by another one. The VZ-52 is a Czech rifle made in the 1950s, so you could consider this one lore friendly, although it would certainly be rare to come by. Essentially, the VZ-52 is a Czech version of the Soviet SKS, but this one has a few differences and it's chambered for the unique 7.62x45 cartridge. 
but there are some variants which utilize the more common 7.62x39. By default though, this gun mod will use the 5mm ammunition from Fallout 4's base game. Okay, maybe that was a bit too complicated, but here's how it looks in gameplay. Bringing it to the workbench will allow you to craft a whole bunch of upgrades. You can make it fully automatic and cut down the barrel if you so wish, but doing so will spawn a swarm of angry ATF agents. There's also options to upgrade the stock, extend the magazine, or slap on some sights, muzzle attachments, a bayonet even, and also an ammo counter, just like the BAR. And now, we have successfully made a very cursed VZ-52. However you build them, the VZ-52 and the BAR are pretty awesome mods, so you should consider adding them to your load order. Up next though, is something that has a little bit more firepower. The M203 Grenade Launcher, or as I like to call it, the Noob Tube. This American-made 40mm grenade launcher first saw service in 1969 during the Vietnam War, and since then, it has been updated with modern tactical accessories. I would say this one is most likely lore-friendly, but it hasn't made an appearance in any Fallout games. This launcher is known for being an underbarrel attachment, but it can also be its own independent weapon system with the addition of a stock and a pistol grip, which is exactly how this mod works. Also, the animations on this one are very crisp. There's actually a fair amount of attachments for this launcher. You can upgrade the receiver, which magically increases your damage, and you can also change up the stock, grip, and paint job, but that's all purely cosmetic. If you don't like the default sights, then you can always opt to add on some modern optics. Perhaps the most important category though is the ammunition type. Here is where you can change the functionality of your grenades. As you can see, there's tons of different options. Some are even non-lethal or purely for utility, but I found that the high-velocity explosive is the best for general combat. Changing the ammo type won't actually force you to find different types of ammo, it all works with the same 40mm grenades. You can find the M203 and its ammunition through the leveled list, or you can always craft everything at the chem station. In addition to the regular variant, there's two unique ones you can find. The Saint Attila is a solid gold M203, which you can find at the Museum of Freedom, locked up in a display case. But shockingly enough, this one is purely for display, so it spits out duds. Basically, it's just a joke, so please don't use this one to take out death claws. The Lahome Replique, though, is an actual lethal weapon that shoots railroad spikes, and you can find it waiting for you in the Railroad HQ. So overall, this is a wonderful grenade launcher mod, and it certainly is one of the best mods of its kind. So, you might as well give this one a download. I'm sure you'll have a blast with it. Moving on to armor now, this is the Hellcat power armor. This power armor made its first appearance to the franchise in Fallout 76, but now it has been remade for Fallout 4 thanks to Newer Mind. And it looks fantastic. The unique aesthetic is truly something to behold, and it sets it apart from the other power armors we see in Fallout. Instead of looking retro, it has more of a modern futuristic look with its sharp geometric edges, and in general, this armor just looks menacing. According to the Fallout 76 lore, this armor is used by the Hellcat Company, which is basically like a mercenary organization. To obtain the power armor in the Commonwealth though, you'll have to head to the Gunner's HQ and claim it from a gunner who's using it. Once it's in your possession, you can take it back to a power armor station and customize it with several unique paint jobs, decals, and the standard modifications. So overall, this is an awesome power armor mod, and it's now one of my favorite sets to be rocking out in the wasteland. 
For a regular set though, this is the Fallout London Merc Outfit. In case you didn't know, there is a mod team working on a DLC sized expansion for Fallout 4 which takes place in London, and this armor set is just one of the many which will be present in that giant mod. But for now, we can enjoy these singular releases until the full project is done. This one in particular adds in a clothing set which is reminiscent of a British World War II uniform, along with matching helmets and gloves. The set has four different color variants, and to actually acquire this attire, you'll have to craft it from the Kemp Station. A pretty neat looking article of clothing, and I'd say it's well suited for Fallout. In a similar vein is the Warhammer 40k Krieg outfit. I've never even played Warhammer, but I do have to admit, this armor looks freaking cool. And I can see that it's inspired by World War I German trench uniforms. It's not a replica though, it does take some artistic liberties and adds a bit of pizzazz. It looks almost apocalyptic, so I could definitely see this outfit fitting perfectly into the Fallout franchise. To get this clothing, you'll have to craft it at the Kim Station, and there you can choose between several different colors. Anyway, that's about it for apparel. On to the next one, which also adds in content seen from other games. Fall Evil Paleheads will add in uh, Paleheads seen from the Resident Evil franchise. They are zombie-like humans which mutated from a virus, and they act very similarly to feral ghouls from Fallout. In fact, they'll share the same animations, but they do have their own custom sounds, which are deep and gurgly. They're definitely some creepy fellows, that's for sure. And I could see these gangrenous creatures belonging in Fallout. The Paleheads will spawn alongside ghouls, so if you're looking for some more visual variety amongst the hordes, then this mod makes for a great addition. For another unique creature mod, or I should say robot mod, is Ice Storm's Combat Drones. This will add in a new enemy type to the Commonwealth. Self-flying drones, which are equipped with either miniguns or laser beams. They can fly pretty dang high, so Make sure to keep an eye to the sky as you're adventuring, or you can just outmaneuver them with a jetpack. Pro moves right there. You'll find out that some of the factions in Fallout have commandeered these drones for their own use, such as the Gunners, the Institute, and the Brotherhood. But you can make your own as well. When you destroy a drone, make sure to pick up their parts so you can use them to craft your very own at any chem station. You will need the Robotics Expert perk though, so get that first. Once you have one crafted, activate it from your inventory and it'll be placed on the ground. Use your hack ability and then command the drone. It'll then fly up in the air and follow you around. It makes for a great combat partner and scout because it'll mark enemies and then shred them up with their guns. You can have several drones at once, but don't take too many or else they may start to bug out. If they are destroyed, then you'll have to craft new ones. But that's okay because these drones are not sentient and don't have feelings. So. They are perfectly disposable. Anyway, this is actually quite a unique and, dare I say, revolutionary mod. I've never seen anything quite like it. A flying companion is surely a first. So, if you're intrigued as I am, then head on over to iStorm's Patreon to download it. Don't worry, it is a free download. The mod author decided to host it through their own platform due to the Nexus mod pack controversy. And if you ever get bored and don't have anything to do, then the Simple Bounties mod is surely for you. It adds in a new NPC to Good Neighbor who will contract you with bounties. They can range anywhere between Deathclaws, Ghouls, and Gunners. The contracts can send you almost anywhere in the Commonwealth, and you can use the bounties to accumulate wealth. The missions can be pretty fun, but they aren't anything super special really. Consider them as another type of Radiant Quest you can do if you want to get more caps, simply explore, or just roleplay as a hired gun. And while you're at it, you might as well install the Popping Heads mod. It's another simple one. All it does is increase the distance that head fragments fly when an enemy is shot in the face. It's a bit of a goofy and gory one, but I kind of like it. If you're a blood-crazed psychopath that derives dopamine from watching body parts fly into the air, then this mod is definitely for you. Well, that's all I got for this month. October has certainly been a great month for Fallout 4 modding. It's good to see that the Fallout 4 modding scene is still in full swing, so make sure to endorse the mod authors to show your support. If you like this video, go ahead and nuke that like button, and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. If there's any mods I missed from October, then leave a comment down below, and I'll see y'all in the next video.